Hello, this is Mike from Applied Motion Products. Welcome to part one of our video tutorial series showing how to get up and running with an Applied Motion Products Ethernet IP integrated motor in Studio 5000. In this installment, I'll show you how to establish basic communications with the drive in about 10 minutes by using our freely available AOIs. If you'd like to follow along, the AOIs I'll be using can be found in the support section of our website, applied-motion.com, under application note 46. The input and output assemblies are detailed in the Ethernet IP appendix of our host command reference, which can be downloaded at applied-motion.com forward slash HCR, and the EDS file for your particular drive, which can be found under downloads on the drive's product page. Okay, let's start by reviewing our hardware. You can see over here, this yellow cable is connected to my PC. So this is what I'm gonna be used for configuring and testing the drive and then later the PLC. I have an Allen Bradley L18ER PLC that right now is just powered on. It's not hooked up to anything just yet. So I'm going to go over to the Step Servo Quick Tuner software, and this can be found as well at applied-motion.com in the software section. And I'm going to make sure my IP address is correct. I know this motor is at 101010, which is the default. So I'm going to hit connect. And you can see it's automatically identified. And now I'm going to upload all from Drive. Now everything is set up here just how I want it. I do have one thing to check though, and this is especially important when you are configuring Ethernet IP drives with Allen Bradley hardware. I'm going to go to Options and then Communication. And you can see here this Field Bus Communication Watchdog. Now this is normally set at a default of 500 milliseconds. And what that means is when the Ethernet communication link is lost for more than half a second, the motor will go into the communication watchdog and it will trip. And you can do any of these um, actions here. You can execute a queue segment or stop the motion in some particular way. The problem is 500 milliseconds is too short for Allen Bradley. The PLCs take a while to start up and then when you're programming, the PLC cuts communication to the drive for more than 500 seconds at a time as part of the normal download process. So that's why I had this set to 10,000 milliseconds. So that's 10 seconds. Um, before the communication watchdog trips. Now, if you leave it at 500 and forget, it's okay, but when you're programming your drive, you're gonna see a communication error pop up on the drive and you know you might wonder what it is. So that's what it is. So I'm gonna set this at 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna to go to the motion simulation tab and turn on my webcam here so you can see the hardware. And I'm just gonna do some quick jog moves just to make sure everything is working. Some relative moves. Go back to distance zero with an absolute move. Everything's working fine, that's great. I didn't change anything, but if you did, you'd hit download just like this, wait for the dialog box to complete, and that's it. Now, we're gonna close Step Zero Quick Tuner, and we have Studio 5000 here. So, I'm gonna turn off my hardware view and create a new project. Going to call it app note 46 project no expansion io plc firmware revision 30. And this will all depend of course on your hardware okay so we can see our nice empty project here the first thing we're going to do is go to tools and the eds hardware installation tool we're going to use to import our eds and again, this can be found on the product page for your specific drive on the Applied Motion website. So I'm going to register an EDS file, a single file, browse to where I have stored it. And then all the defaults here are going to be just fine. And now I have my success screen so I can finish. Now I'm going to go to my Ethernet network. I'm going to right click on it and add a new module. And because we imported our EDS file, we can simply type in applied motion in the search text and we can see it to come up. And of course, if you imported multiple files for different drives, they'll all show up here. So be sure to select the drive that you're looking for. Hit create. Give it a name. Let's call this the demo motor. Set the IP address, 10, 10, 10, Whoops. Ten, 
10.10. There we go. And I'm going to change the input to a double int array for the input and output assemblies. And in the connection tab, I'm going to note here that my RPI is the default 20 milliseconds. I have no reason to change that. Of course, you can if you do. And my connection type is going to be unicast. So I'm going to close that. Now, oh, one more thing I'll do is I'm going to set my communication path. So let's go back to our hardware view here. Now that the drive is configured, we're going to reconfigure our hardware a little bit. So we're going to unplug the PC communication cable. We're going to plug that into the PLC. And we're going to take this blue cable that's plugged into the PLC and plug that into the drive. So now what that does is that allows us to control and configure the PLC from the PC on the yellow cable and allows the PC to control the drive with the blue cable. And of course, if you had multiple axes, um, you could use a managed switch for this, or you could control the PLC from the USB cable and have two drives on the two built-in Ethernet ports on your PLC. Hardware is up to you. Now that we have our PLC plugged in, we're going to set the communication path for the project up here. Uh, we're going to set the communication path for the project up here in path. So this opens the Who Active dialog. I'm going to expand out my Ethernet IP backplane. I'm going to hit the PLC at 10, 10, 10, 150, and I'm going to hit set project path. You can see the path in project is now populated. I'm going to close that. And now our hardware is all set up and ready to go. So let's start doing some software. So I'm going to double click on my ladder in the main routine. You can see it's empty here. I'm going to look in this add-on element group and here it's empty. So I'm going to go to add-on instructions in the control organizer, right click, Import add-on instruction. So these can be found attached to App Note 46 on the Applied Motion website. And then once you unzip them and put them wherever you're going to put them, you're going to navigate to that folder. And I'm going to import for now the AMP input assembly. And again, all the defaults here are going to be fine. And I'm going to import one more while I'm at it. I'm going to import the AMP status code. Okay, so now if we click on our rung again, and we go look at the element group, the add-on element group, we can now see AMP input assembly and AMP status code. So I'm going to click on each one of those. They're going to get dropped onto rung zero and I'm going to create some tags. Demo motor input instruction. The input for this is going to be the raw demo motor data array, input assembly. And for the output, I'm going to create a new tag, which I'm going to call demo motor input assay, input assembly. And on the status code AOI, again, I'm going to create a new tag that's a type AMP status code. Demo motor status instruction. And the input of that, I'm going to point at the demo motor input assembly dot status code. Now, everything looks good to me. I'm going to right click, hit verify wrong, make sure it looks good to the compiler. You can see down here it does. Now I'm going to do communications and download. And I'll turn on my hardware view again. And hit download. And once the downloading is done, we'll be able to see the input assembly instructions come alive. Ah, one important thing I forgot to mention. The switch on my PLC is set to the remote run mode. If this is set to run a program, it's not going to work quite as well for controlling in the, um, in the um, Studio 5000 software. So make sure this is set to remote run. And now that it's done downloading, it's going to prompt me to change back from programming to remote run to match the switch. I'm going to say yes. And right here, we have 
some information. So you can see we have the input voltage is 24 volts, that's correct. There's some holding current here, and you can see if I move the shaft a little bit, that number increases, positive in one direction, negative in the other direction. The internal temperature sensor, encoder position, absolute position, etc. And then you can see here we have a status code of 9, and that is in base hex, so base 16. What does that mean? Well, it's a little bit hard to say. That's why we have the status code AOI. So if we decode, we, we point this status code variable into the status code AOI, the status code AOI decodes it, and it tells us status code 9 means the motor is enabled and the drive is in position. Everything that we expect. And that's it. You are now communicating between your Applied Motion Products Ethernet IP drive and your Allen Bradley PLC using Studio 5000. The AOIs I use can be found in the support section of our website, applied-motion.com, under Application Note 46. If you'd like more detailed information about our Ethernet IP implementation, input and output assemblies, etc., the Ethernet IP appendix of the host command reference document is always the best place to start. You can find the latest version at applied-motion.com forward slash HCR. In the next video, we'll cover doing basic point-to-point -point and jogging moves with the motor. And in future videos, we'll be exploring things like how our AOIs work, adding multiple drives on a network, and performing sensorless hard stop homing routines. If you have any questions about our AOIs, Ethernet IP communications, or motion applications in general, please reach out to our applications engineering team through our website at applied-motion.com. Email us at support at applied-motion.com or just give our apps engineers a call at 800-525-1609. Thanks for watching. I hope this was a helpful video. If you have any other topics you'd like to see covered, please leave them in the comments below or let an apps engineer know when you talk to them.